Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the grand final of Lindores Abbey Rapid Challenge 2020. Pretty unexpected as Hikaru Nakamura won against number one in the world, uh, Magnus Carlsen and also Daniel Dubov won against Ding Lir and number three in the world. So pretty unexpected, but yes, here we go. Hikaru Nakamura, his rapid ranking 2829 and he's gonna play as black. And Daniel Dubov from Russia, his rapid ranking 2770, he's gonna play as white. And as both players are very, very creative and like to experiment in the opening, uh, but Nakamura said, I did what Daniel does against everybody. I played the man more than I played the position. So this was said in the interview after, um, after the games, after the match finished. Uh, and this also determined the, the style of Nakamura played against Daniel Dubov. Uh, because he just played fast chess, very solid, not really creative. And as he stated, the first two games were just uh, boring. Uh, but he managed to win that and uh, and yeah so i would like to show you the third game which was very exciting because daniel dubov he wanted to you know play uh, continue to play and then he had to win that, this and this is there is no choice no draws so he has to win uh, and hikaru nakamura has to at least draw this is why uh, this game was quite exciting. Hikaru Nakamura tried to be active as well. <laughs> However, uh, without further ado, let's jump into the board. We have C4 by Daniel Dubov, uh, E5, so English opening, Kings English variation. And now Knight on C3, Knight on F6, Knight on F3, Knight on C6, four knights variation. It was played a couple of times during this tournament. If you are interested, uh, I have a full playlist of the English opening, uh, so you can check it out. Uh, and now G3 by Daniel Dubov. D5, so strikes in the center, C takes on D5, Knight takes on D5, and bishop on g2. d3 also was possible uh, creating, you know, this dragon formation. So white could play as black uh, with extra tempo, you know. So so dragon variation uh, in Sicilian defense. So that would be pretty interesting. But we have knight on b6, castle and now bishop on e7 by black. a3 by Daniel Dubov preparing b4 uh, and now castle b4 as planned. Uh, and now bishop on e6. And here we have rook on b1. Now the idea uh, behind this move is supporting b5. And now uh, if white play b5 immediately, uh, then knight on d4. Uh, and now rook on b1 has to be played anyway. So... Uh, that's just not a very precise move. Rook on b1 just prepares. It was played plenty of times. Uh, and now, for example, white cannot play knight on d4. Because that would be really bad. Because this knight now has to move somewhere. Knight on a4 or knight on b1. And both squares are really, really awful for the knight. And if knight on e4, then after f5 the knight is trapped. So this opening has to be played, you know, really precise. So rook on b1 first, uh, and then after f6, b5. Knight on d4, of course, exchanging uh, these knights, as I show you, it's not really great. So e3, kicking the knight. Knight on f3, bishop on f3, and now the bishop attacks on b7. And the main line in the position is queen on c8. Uh, and after queen on c2, the game can continue and the plan for black is not only uh, defense ag against the bishop, uh, the b7, but also this bishop uh, can try to exchange the light square bishop and uh, the, the light squares will not be defended as well as with the bishop. So uh, that could be the plan. However, we have rook on b8, which is also quite popular uh, and it was played many times uh, by Topaov against Carlsen, by uh, Duarte 
Fund against Gel Fund and so on. So uh, definitely well known theory. Uh, we have D4 now striking in the centers. E takes on D4 and E takes on D4 and White gonna play with this isolated pawn, which looks like not really at attractive, but this actually uh, it's part of the theory. We have Queen on D7, so uh, moving the Queen on this diagonal. However, it's not the plan for for Black to to move the Bishop and exchange as this bishop also uh, belongs to this diagonal as a you know defending piece as we have the pawn on f6 uh, so the pawn structure is slightly weakened we have rook on e1 uh, and now rook f on e8 a4 uh, a5 is coming so uh, definitely black has to be aware bishop on f7 and now a5 as planned knight on d5 knight on d5 bishop on d5 and now bishop f4 pinning the pawn um, on c7 so now uh, b6 is coming definitely so uh, rook b on c8 and pinning and now we have series of the of the very precise move so bishop on g4 first skewering the the queen so uh, of course the queen cannot move because it's uh, losing the exchange the bishop cannot come to uh, e6 because it's controlled twice so it's impossible the only move is f5 but f5 uh giving up the e5 square for the bishop so bishop can now come to e5 so uh, pretty sneaky uh, and now this position was actually reached by boris gelfan in 2017 he won that game uh, and he played bishop on f3 and after bishop on f6 bishop e5 and after exchanging the bishops uh Gelfan got this uh, passed pawn uh, also the the bishop is attacked twice and he has a lot of activity and actually he won the the game with the heavy pieces on the queen side these two pawns did a really great job against these three pawns very interesting game however Daniel Dubov didn't go for bishop on f3 definitely both players knew that game however he played bishop on h5 now attacking the rook and inviting black to play g6 which would uh, actually weaken the the pawn structure and position of the king so we have rook e on d8 and now bishop f3 uh, this time uh, threatening to take the bishop and after you know bishop would be taken uh, the bishop on e7 is hanging so bishop on f8 first but now bishop e5 so look at this very beautiful pair of pawn and the bishop right in the center of the board uh, we have b6 by Hikaru Nakamura asking uh, Dubov what you gonna do uh, on the on the queen side as I know that it's quite dangerous uh, you know this pawn, pawns against these three pawns so a takes on b6 and here Hikaru in the interview said I should play a takes on b6 is more logical is more solid and I needed only a draw so that would be the right choice however we have c takes on b6 and making you know the open file File, open c file for the rook but also creating the weakness on a7 we have bishop on d5 with check by daniel dubov queen on d5 and now queen a4 so uh, improving the position of the queen with tempo with attack on a7 uh, we have rook on d7 defending and now rook b on c1 so fight for the control of the of the c file and if black actually exchange the rooks uh, then white would have very very nice you know uh, control of the c file so hikaru play rook c on d8 now controlling seven and eight rank uh, however daniel dubov play rook on c6 now he is controlling six rank which is pretty important because hikaru want to play a uh, bishop on d6 uh, bishop on d6 exchange the bishops and now the rooks could go for example on the sixth rank uh, and maybe play something on the h file maybe on the g file uh, so hikaru first wanted to prepare that and he played f4 and in the interview said that was just dumb move um, 
However, why? Uh, of course, if bishop takes on f4 just to keep the, the pawn structure intact, that uh, that would cause the queen on d4 uh, and it would be impossible to win as, as white this, this game. So, so there are, you know, uh, that would be just impossible. It's a, it's a pretty much a draw. Uh, but after g takes on f4, which Daniel Dubov played, Hikaru had the plan. So bishop on d6. However, how to execute the plan? Because now the queen is on this diagonal, which look, look pretty nasty. And if bishops could, could come somehow, maybe this way, uh, and, and try to, you know, uh, checkmate the opponent, that would be pretty dangerous. Uh, or maybe something like bishop on d6, but how Daniel uh, would even move, you know, from, uh, from this position. This is beautiful position, stronghold just in the center of the board, very, very annoying bishop. Uh, but if bishop on d6, hypothetically, and after rook on d6, rook d6, rook d6, uh, this was maybe somehow the idea, uh, but the execution was just impossible to do because after bishop on d6, Daniel Dubov play queen on c4 immediately. So uh, now the queen is pinned and just have to be exchanged, just how to exchange it. So queen on c4 by uh, Hikaru Nakamura, rook takes on c4 and now bishop e5. We have d takes on e5, rook d4 trying to win back the pawn, uh, but of course it's not possible. Uh, rook on e4 is possible one way or rook e on c1 uh, and the pawn is defended and cannot be taken. And now... Hikaru could try something like rook on c4 and then uh, try to attack the pawn on b5 uh, and white would have to decide what to do so maybe exchange the pawn for this pawn and black would have the passed pawn here uh, which would be some counterplay probably not enough uh, to draw but that would be some counterplay or rook on b4 more passive approach but then bring the bring the king to the game for example after king on f7 king g2 king e six king f3 black could try uh, something like king on f5 and if rook on e4 just you know trying to create the passed pawn and push this passed pawn a uh, king e6 so rook before king f5 uh, and black could be quite annoying with that so white probably would have to give this pawn uh, for this pawn and try to attack from behind uh, and maybe have some chances for winning that's probably a uh, dubov would win but that would be a very interesting uh, rook endgame however uh, hikaru nakamura play h5 so moving the the pawn and also uh, making a space for the king uh, we have king on g2 and now king h7 as king on f7 would be would be probably very bad idea after rook on c7 uh, black would have to exchange the rooks or move the king uh, and after you know kicking the king to the center uh, simply rook f7 and now this is just disaster because this king where is this king going e3 <laughs> e3 is really bad spot for the king as this pawn now gonna go for e6, e7 uh, and definitely gonna promote. So that would be disaster. This is why Hikaru Nakamura play king on h7 but it's not good as well because after rook d4, a rook goes on d4, king f3 bringing the king to the center and now the king is uh, completely in the center and this king is on h7. We have rook on d5 the attempt on attack on b5 but it just doesn't work because e6 and this pawn gonna promote as the king is on h7 so you see all already what is going on here we have king on g6 trying to catch the pawn but now simply rook on e1 uh, rook on d8 rook on b8 as you see this just doesn't work promotion in in, in next move so uh, rook on d8 e7 uh, rook on e8 and now very important move uh, how to finish this game so uh, you can pause the video and try to find the winning move while I enjoy my cup of tea. So the winning move is uh, 
what I want to achieve is actually to move the king to the center uh, and win the pawn endgame. Exchange the, the rooks uh, and, and win the pawn endgame, okay? So that's the plan. However, king on e4 now would be met, of course, with the, with the rook on e7, winning the rook on e1. So it doesn't make any sense. But rook on e5 making a shelter for the king now king can go to e4 so after king on f6 which was played by nakamura king on e4 uh, and now after exchanging the pieces uh white have completely centralized king uh, and after king on f5 hikaru nakamura resigned the game he resigned because uh he cannot defend that if he play king on f7 then simply h4 first that would be the most precise uh, and after g6, king g5, king g7, and then f5. Now, this pawn gonna fall, so uh, after taking the pawn, what to play? King on h6, just simply uh, king e6, and now this pawn gonna merge and promote, so that's the one option. Uh, and if king on f7, then pick up this pawn and also win the game. And also uh, king on d6 and going after this pawn doesn't work because this king is just faster. Look at this. That, what is that? This is only three moves and black need to... Wow. Six moves. So uh, definitely white would win. This is why in this position after king on f5 Hikaru Nakamura resigned the game. And I would like to show you the, uh, the results. So here we go. Uh, we have the Hikaru Nakamura won the first two games. Uh, he played very, very fast. Daniel Dubov actually had the time troubles. Hikaru still had 8-10 minutes on the clock and Daniel Dubov only one minute. So uh, he tried to be as creative as possible, but uh, Hikaru Nakamura just, you know, set up the, the, his strategy against Daniel Dubov, not against the position on the, on the board. So very interesting. He won two games, which, as he said, were, were quite boring. And this was game number three, where Daniel Dubov had to win and he managed to win. Uh, and uh, in the game number four, Hikaru Nakamura uh, also needed to win and Daniel Dubov did pretty pretty well got some initiative got the very promising position uh, but then Hikaru counter attack and and managed to draw uh, and that was also also interesting game just a draw so two and a half to one and a half and Hikaru Nakamura won the first mini match and today we're gonna see another mini match where Daniel Dubov has to win if he want to, uh, you know, win this tournament. It's gonna be very, very tough. It uh, seems like Hikaru Nakamura found a way um, to actually defeat Daniel Dubov. Okay, so that's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. If you like this video, press like. If for some reason you don't like it, press unlike. And if you want to uh, support the channel, leave the comment. I would like to hear from you. I answer all the comments. I can promise that. And if you don't want to miss any other content, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.